It's a busy day here today on For Your Home. I've got lots of basil that needs to be canned, and I have a house full of contractors waiting for me down at the project house. I've got big decisions i got to make, like what color am I going to stain the floors? I've got to pick out interior door selections, plus the tile and the countertops. It's a busy day, and the metal roof is going to go on the new porch. Stick around. I know you're going to learn something today on For Your Home. Last year when I had this garden design in front of my new house, I knew that I wanted to be able to grow vegetables, flowers, and herbs. It turned out perfect. You know, I am so shocked. Right here in the middle of the city, I can have a garden that is this prolific. I have melons, I've got peppers, tomatoes like crazy, all kinds of different herbs, even okra, and Thai basil, something new that I've done this year, and then of course regular basil. I have already put away tons of basil, but I can't let it go to waste. So I'm going to cut a little bit of this, take it in, and show you how to make your own pesto. You know, it's great when you can pick your herbs. Already of your vegetables, the very first thing in the morning, because they're fresher, it's cooler. They always put up nicer that way. You know, once you bring your basil in, you're going to want to clean it up really good, wash it. And here's what I like to do, is I take an old beach towel, and I clean it really well, wash it off, and then I lay it on a beach towel like this to dry, roll it up, and then, you know, in just a little short period of time, the leaves are dry. You don't want to try to process them when they're wet because it's kind of going to make your pesto a little soggy. All right, when I was a little girl, my mom used to can all the time, and I'm surprised I even like to do it now because I'd have to sit there for hours with my brother Ricky and we'd be shelling green beans or something. But pesto, it's just a lot of fun to do, and it's so easy. You know, every time I do this, though, I remember my mom, and this was her little bottle grabber. When you sterilize your bottles, you'd reach in the hot boiling water and bring them out. So it's just kind of like nice to have her here with me as we work today. Okay, everybody has a recipe for pesto. Everybody. Mine is really simple. I go by a rule of what I call eight to one, meaning I like to use eight cups of fresh basil leaves. You know, once you've got them all cleaned, you just got to sit there and pick off all the leaves. I suggest you get a great old movie, a nice glass of wine, and have fun picking leaves off. Okay, then I put a handful of garlic in. And at the fresh market, at the farmer's market, you can buy it already peeled. That's the only time I do it is when I'm canning pesto because that's a lot of work to do all of them. So I'm going to put in my garlic, just a handful, and turn on my food processor. And you just want to chop that up, okay? And then I'm going to add my fresh basil leaves. And it's amazing. I mean, I can't believe how many leaves you can get off of one plant. I'm really pretty much had it with canning this year of the basil because, you know, I started out early. I planted too many plants like I always do. I put up at least 30 jars of pesto. Some I put in the freezer and some I use, of course, fresh, and then I can some, which is different for me this year. Usually I don't do that part, but I said, why not? I've got so much to do. From now on, after this batch, I'm just giving away the leaves and everybody can make their own pesto. Okay, so I've got my leaves in. Just gonna turn it on again. Now I just wanna chop this up. And once you get it chopped up, you wanna just come in with your spatula and just kind of push it down off the sides and rake in any of that garlic that's still lingering. We're going to be doing more chopping, so don't worry about getting it just, you know, pre fine. We don't need to worry about that at this stage. Okay, now, my eight to one, eight cups of the basil, and then one cup of Parmesan or Romano cheese, whichever you like. Uh, some people say, oh, if you're going to freeze it, don't add the cheese. It doesn't freeze well. I found it freezes really great. So, you know, everybody, like I said, has their own recipe. Then these are pine nuts, one cup of pine nuts. And I really suggest if you're going to make a lot of this that you shop at one of those bulk places to get your pine nuts and your cheese and garlic because it is expensive, but you can really save a lot of money doing that. Okay, once I got those in there, then I've got one teaspoon of black pepper, coarse black pepper, and one teaspoon of sea salt. Okay, 
All right, so then I'm going to put this all back on. I'm going to chop this up. And pulse it a little bit if you want to knock down some more of it. And this one, just go ahead and really get it going so it's chopping it up a lot finer. Okay, part of my eight to one, eight ounces of good virgin olive oil. Don't try to skimp on this and buy a cheap olive oil because your pesto will just not taste well. So everything you cook is only as good as what you put in it. Okay, so now I want to drizzle this in the top while it's going. That way it keeps the olive oil from separating. So I'm just going to turn it on and just drizzle a little bit at a time. Look at that gorgeous color. Once you've got it, take a look at this. I just think this is so beautiful. Look at that green, green color. I gotta get this mess cleaned up. I got a lot of contractors down at the house waiting on me and I got work to do today. Jason, I'm loving the way that that metal roof's turning out. Hey, Vicki, glad to hear it, glad to hear it. Well, you know, this is the first time that I have ever used a metal roof in one of my projects and I've been wanting to for a long time, but this looks so great. The contemporary look I was after, it's perfect. Okay, let's talk about durability because everything that I use, I want it to be as maintenance free as possible. What are we talking about here? It's an extremely durable product, uh, especially as compared to traditional materials. How uh, much longer will this last? You are looking at a 50 to 60 year lifespan for what you're putting on this home. Okay. Um, compare that to, you know, a traditional shingle. 20, 25 years, so it's two and a half, three times the okay, lifespan. And we don't have to do anything. We don't have to recoat it, paint it. No special coatings, no special cleaning, no special maintenance. It's okay. uh, basically put it up there, look at it, and enjoy it. Now, before Jason and Scotty could get this metal roof up here, we had to have some work done underneath it. This is Ned, and he is our roofer. How's it going today, babe? Things are good. How about yourself? They're going good. You know, I came over here, and you, yourself, were doing the work the other day uh, up on that roof doing some underlayment. What were you doing up there? Actually, what we were doing, we were coming in and preparing the roof deck to accept the new ice and water shield underlayments that we install under metal roofs. Uh -huh. That's much different than the old felt paper that we used in the past. This new ice and water shield materials that we use is, is, it has a felt surface. It's easy to walk uh -huh. on so when you put it down. So it's not it has a self-adhering back so that when you peel the lace off, it will stick to the surface. It's very, you know, sticky really and sticky. stays right on. It's very easily to install. Okay, so you don't have to glue it down or put any mask yes, or anything underneath and no, it? No, don't do any of that. But it is supposed to be installed directly to the wood deck. I love that about it. Well, I'm excited about the roof, and I think we're going to do just fine and live with that little variation. Well, we've got it all going there on good today. I think you'll be very pleased with it. We're always talking about different decisions that you have to make when you're in the middle of a renovation project, but believe it or not, this is a decision that you don't make till all the way down the road, right, Dan? That's it. This is Dan Minton, and Dan is with Accent Wood Flooring, and he's my flooring guy. We're going to pick out the color of stain for this house floors, and we're going gray, which is a new trend right now, isn't it? It is. I mean, these are two new colors that have become really, really popular right now the classic gray and the weathered oak. It's a nice change of pace from the dark colors yeah. that's been pretty popular for the past year or so. Well, you know, when we were talking, I said, you know, for this house, it's contemporary. Mm -hmm. And we are having this gray theme that's running throughout the project and the silver and that kind of look. Right. So it just didn't seem to me that the brown floors are really gonna do it for us. So, okay, I've got a copy of our, our sample of our kitchen cabinet doors yes. in that beautiful color. That's a good, that's yeah. nice. So, yeah, this is called dovetail, and so I think if we use this, since that's really the major part mm -hmm. of the house, the big cabinetry in the kitchen, exactly. and then the big floors, we can try and make them tie in. What we're going to show right first uh, is the weathered oak. Okay. And we're going to put it here. Now, on. you prepped the floors We've first. We've already sanded it and prepped okay. the floors really good for you. Now, these are brand new hardwoods here. That's exactly right. Okay. They're, they're red oak, uh, select grade hardwood, and uh, they're ready to go. And this is the way to pick out stain, not it from is. a little chip. You need to chip. look at the stain while it's wet and, you know, uh huh. because uh, when it dries, it does change a little bit of different color, and then when you put that first coat of finish on, 
It brings that color right back out. Well, I'm anxious to see. Okay, so this is the, the weathered oak now, he's, color. He's going to show the classic gray here. Okay. I want All you to right. see them both while they're wet. Okay. On there. And you can see already the difference yeah. of the brown that was in there. That's, got, that's definitely and a more, little bit more brown mm -hmm. to it, the weathered oak, and this uh -huh. is definitely on the gray side. Well, you know, I, it, is a, it is a risk taker to go to a different color of hardwoods because, you know, most people think hardwoods, they think of that, you know, saddle brown kind of color. See, I think that right there. Oh, yeah. I that. can already tell. I like that. Okay, well, let's put this down. That's a nice tone difference. You still see the wood. Oh, I think that's going to be gorgeous. Oh, that is really beautiful. I really love that color. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, uh, it doesn't go black on me anymore. No. It goes brown, it's but still, it tones you know, the, that down. The uh, uh, open grain shows a real dark gray color tones, and you still see the light color wood in there. Okay. So I think that's going to uh, work really well with those cabinets. Okay, so weathered oak, now that I'm looking at that, that just, just doesn't have it's just, near It's enough. just way too brown. Yeah. yeah. And this, I, like, I definitely this is great. like the gray And it's better. not too dark at all. And then we'll put a water-based finish on there, and, and you'll be good to go. Looks like we got a winner. Yeah, that okay. looks good to me. We'll go with this, and you know, Dan is always the last guy in because nobody wants to mess up his beautiful floors <laughs> once they're done. So once we get everything done in this house, then Dan and his crew will come in, sand it all down, put this color of stain on everything with a top coat on it, yeah. and it'll be, it'll be done. beautiful for okay. years. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Whenever you're doing a major renovation project, and especially if you're building a new house, there are decisions, decisions, decisions that always have to be made. And you as a homeowner, well, most of those have to be your choice. Now, there's a lot of decisions to make, and you can make mistakes, but one that you don't ever want to make is when it comes to color. And what I mean by that is the tone that you get for your project. You know, you decide where you want your project to go, like if it's going to be gray or beige or blue or whatever that color is, you need to get the right tone of gray, the right tone of yellow, the right tone of tan, because it's totally different than shades. Shades are things that are a lighter version of whatever color you've picked out, but tone is what that base color is. How many times have you worked with like beiges or tans and you put them all together and you go, ugh, this just doesn't work because it's like too pink looking, too yellow looking? That's because the base tones of all those different pages you're working with don't match. So the first thing that established for me the colors in this project was as soon as I committed to the kitchen cabinets. Kitchen cabinets really can control a lot of the tones and the colors you're going to use in a project, especially if they're going to be painted like ours. Now these are our cabinet doors, and I went with a gray color. This is called Dovetail. And it has a really nice, rich, warm base to it. There's a little bit of brown in this gray, and that's where we wanted to go. Once I had that, then I could match the stain that we're going to use on the hardwood, uh, hardwood floors to that. I could pick out tile, the other bathroom vanities, could move right through the house, always being true to the tones that are in this gray. From there, all your wall colors, everything are easy. Keep that as your ongoing constant. So once you've decided what those tones are, then you want to start making all your selections. Once I had my cabinets, I had it off to choose the next thing that would be a real controlling factor in this decor, and that was the countertops. Armed with those door samples, off I went to my showroom. Take a look. Hey, Brad, how are you? Hi, Vicki. I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm so good glad you could you. find the time to meet with me today. Yeah, absolutely. This is a new project house that we're working on this season on For Your Home. Uh-huh. And we just made all of our final selections on cabinet colors, so that mm -hmm. means it's time to come here. Okay. All right? So this house is very contemporary. Okay. Okay? So all this right. is for the kitchen. The gray. Okay. What do you think of that? Beautiful. Love the color. And for and the, the Jack and Jill bathroom, I've got this really great pale greenish gray color. Uh huh. And the other ones are kind of just white and off white. Okay. okay. That we're using in other areas. And in the master bathroom, we're doing a natural walnut. Okay. So all of these are kind of our color theme that we're going through here for the kitchen. Okay. I love the look of Carrera, but I don't like the maintenance on it. Yep. So I want to see what you have as an alternative for that. Excellent. We okay. actually have some good alternatives. Uh, the, the look that is not marble, but looks like marble. We hear that a lot, right? Okay. 
Here's uh, same color, but I used two samples to give you the, show you the difference that no two sample would be alike. Okay, so you just like in stone, where you exactly, get that variety. Absolutely. This color is called Lagoon, uh -huh. and it provides you that look, that almost feel of marble. Okay, so if somebody spills a glass of red wine or they squeeze a lemon out on here, you're not going to have the maintenance issues? You're not. It's a maintenance-free quartz surface. Okay, so I'd like to see a big slab of this before I make up my mind, but I love okay. the way it goes with the gray because it yeah, has like those we'll gray good. undertones, okay? It look great. Now, in the laundry room and in the Jack and Jill bathroom, I want to go with something that has a recycled quality to it. Okay. I was thinking maybe the eco look. Yep. What kind of color choices? We have a bunch of color options in eco, and the thing about uh, this product is people want the look but they don't want to sacrifice the performance of a recycled product. Uh -huh. So we have uh, many different options to choose from uh, and also maybe something that fits that color palette that you're looking for to really lighten up the room. Yeah, yeah. I, I like this. Mm -hmm. I like this. You know, I know you guys, you guys have a lot of great gray choices, but I want to stay lighter if okay. I can. Okay, yeah. Um, that would look great. That's a really nice alternative and I, I think it would look equally as, as nice with the white in the laundry room. So that, that might be a real one for really consideration there. Rooms. Okay. Yeah. Now, in the master bathroom, those walnut cabinets, that's dark for me. Yeah, that is. Yeah, usually I'm much lighter yeah. painted finishes. But because it's contemporary and walnut is so popular right now, mm -hmm. so my response to that was to go to a solid white countertop, but yeah. then I'm afraid it's going to be too boring. Have you thought about alternative finishes? Like what? Let me show you. Okay. Here is one, and this is a quartz product, but you can see by the oh, texture, wow. feel the texture of that. It's sort of a pebbly kind of surface too. Correct, and this is quartz. Well, what do they call this finish? This is called a vol volcano finish. Volcano you may also finish. hear it called suede uh -huh. or a leathered finish. Yeah, but this is heavier texture than I've seen, you know, yeah. like in, in regular stone when they put a, a, a leather finish on it. I like that, mm -hmm. that's really nice. And with that natural wood, I, can I see a big slab of this, though, to see if I really love that You finish? are in luck, and we can see a big slab of all the different colors that you okay, have Okay, because that's really the way to pick it out. Now, last problem we have. Sure. Not problem, delightful opportunity. Sure. That's what I like to say as <laughs> a designer. <laughs> yes. We have in the outdoor area, we're going to be having a grill, mm -hmm. and we need a countertop. And I know a lot of times marble and granites, and those are just not good alternatives to be out there. Yeah. What would you suggest? You know, the UV element from the sun uh -huh. can really put a, a lot of a strain on any surface. Uh, we have a product that can certainly address that, however, and with some color options that we have here. Okay. Uh, this product is called Decton, and it is perfect for an outdoor or indoor solution. solution. It's an ultra compact surface. It provides the stability, the uh, a strength of a traditional stone countertop. Uh -huh. And it's made from the raw materials that you find in glass and in porcelain and in quartz. Oh, wow. So this, this is going to function outside like a ceramic tile or something would very, as far as it very, goes? Very similar, UV resistant, great for any outdoor application. And does this come in big slabs as well? Even bigger slabs than, say, a quartz or a granite, which in return for your project, I have don't know the exact size of it, uh -huh. could mean less seams. Oh, I love that idea. Mm -hmm. I want to, do you have this here at the warehouse? We too? do, absolutely. Okay. We have well, all of it here. Why don't we uh, head out to the warehouse, okay. take a look at those big slabs, and see if my selections from the small samples hold true when the, I get to the big ones? Let's do it. Let's put on the hard hat and the okay. vest and let's go. Okay, I love it. Great. Brad and I headed out to the warehouse to take a look at the Lagoon Slab as well as that wonderful new volcano finish on the white stock. Wasn't that a fun showroom? I tell you, you go in there and there are just so many wonderful shades of every color you can imagine to choose from. And I love working with that quartz product because the color is consistent. And when you're a designer, it's so much easier to match a consistent color than say something that's going to vary from one slab of stone to another slab. So here's what I ended up with when I chose the tile. Let's start down here with the master bathroom. Now, this is a sink that I'm gonna work with and it's a beautiful clear glass vessel sink. And I think that vessel sinks have a nice contemporary flair to them. So that's the reason I went for this entire project with vessels instead of undermount sinks. 
So the countertop that I chose, you might remember this from in the showroom, it's just a beautiful white, but it has a little bit of a pebbled finish to it. Not just solid white, but a little pebble. For the shower, I went with a ceramic tile. It looks like Carrera marble, but it actually is ceramic tile, much easier to maintain and care for. Big sheets. Now to break it up so that we have tile on the walls, but it's not all the same thing, I'm going to work with a, uh, what we call, these are called pencil rails, and this is going to divide up our band that's going to go around the shower. See these beautiful glass tiles? Those are going to make a nice, big, bold band around there. Pencil rail at the top, pencil rail at the bottom. I'll probably use just about six or eight rows of these, not a full 12-inch sheet. And then for the floor, I'm a big fan in the new tiles that have a look of fabric to them. This one looks like white linen. I just love the knobby next to it. It also, because it has this texture, it's not slippery, so it makes it a great choice for the floor. And for the vanity in there, we're going with this gorgeous walnut. Remember, this is what our barn doors are going to look like that lead into that master bathroom. Really nice white colors, very contemporary, contemporary very clean. We get to the Jack and Jill bathroom, a different shape of our vessel sink, much more shallow, much more open, and I like the look of this one. For the floor, again, I went back to something that had the look of cloth. It's a woven, little stripes to it, just very pale um, white with a little bit of aqua running through it. The glass tile that we're going to be using around the shower has that same hint of color. Love the soft, uh, subtle look to it. Here's the countertop I selected for the Jack and Jill bathroom. This is recycled glass. It has that same kind of aqua and white combination like the floor, picks up the aqua. And then with the glass vessel, it all ties back together. But these tiles do not come with what we call a border or a bullnose tile. So we're going to use a pencil edge for it as well. This is white and it's iridized, gives it a little bit zippy look to it. I love all the new iridized finishes because they just sparkle when the light hits it. We're using chrome fixtures, so that'll also put off light. But look how nice, I hope you can see the sparkle between the glass and that little pencil rail. Really a nice touch. For the vanity in there, this is a different shade of gray. It has a little bit of green and brown in it, so it works beautifully with all of these colors. Okay. Laundry room. Laundry room is a place to have a lot of fun. And our cabinets are very basic in there. Uh, but when it comes to the tile, this is, is just a fun mosaic piece. And the reason there's brown paper on part and not on the other is because this comes covered completely with brown paper when you get it. And this is the side that faces out. But because of all these little pieces, they can't put it on a regular grid like they do other small tile because the grid would show through the back of the glass. So instead, to hold all these pieces together so the tile guy's not having to sit there and put in a zillion little bitty pieces, they cover the front of it with paper. Once it is uh, installed on the wall, then they'll come back and they'll soak this paper off. So I've peeled it back so you can see the colors. This is an aqua color, it's iridized. We have more white glass that's iridized in here. And then the gray. Why the gray? It ties back in with the kitchen. The laundry room is right off the kitchen. That ties the two of them together. The floors through this entire house are going to be gray stain. So this will just pick up that little touch of gray. Really gonna be pretty and fun at the same time. Powder rooms, powder rooms to me should always be dressy. So in that room, I'm going with just a pale off-white shade for the cabinets, just to give it a richness to it. And then the tile are iridized glass mosaic tiles again. Some are plain uh, white glass, others are iridized so that they're uh, mixed in together in a mosaic pattern. So when they're all on the wall, they'll just kind of glitter a little bit. Again, a great vessel sink in that room. In the kitchen, gray cabinets. I am going with a quartz material that looks like marble, but does not have the maintenance issues that marble has. This is a beautiful alternative, especially if you love to entertain like I do or cook a lot, and it'll be very easy to care for. For the backsplash, I still like the look of that subway tile, that three inch, six inch look 
but I'm kind of bored with a flat surface. This is beveled. Can you see how that edge is beveled all the way around it, just like a piece of glass? When these are all put together, they'll, be, they'll have that great beveled edge that'll meet each other, and it'll give a lot of depth to that wall. So even though it's plain white, being beveled like that gives it a more interesting look, mixes up the old subway, but still gives us a nice clean look. And in a kitchen, I like to see things like the, the wine glasses and the vegetables and the fresh herbs, and those things bring in the color. So grays are neutral. We've got great whites mixed out through the whole house, a little bit of aqua, a little bit of gray, and that's our color palette for all of our solid surfaces that we're going to be installing in the house. Do you want to know more about the projects today or our guests? Visit us on the web. You're going to find great behind the scenes shots, streaming video, project ideas. We even have an e-newsletter with tips and ideas. It's foryourhome.com. Some days on a job site, it doesn't seem like a lot gets done, but boy, today wasn't one of those days. We had a lot of worker bees and a lot of productivity happened here. I'm really excited to see everything moving forward. I just can't wait until we start to get the floors done and the trim goes on and the paint, but that's next time's show. Hope you'll join me right here again for another episode of For Your Home. Put your pesto that you prepare like this into each one of the individual little ice cubes. Fill it up on plastic wrap over the top, push it down nice and tight so that the air doesn't get to the pesto. Slide that in the freezer and let them freeze. Once they're frozen solid, pop them out into a plastic zip bag. You can grab one of those little cubes of frozen pesto, throw it in, and it's just like summertime all over again. 